Hey, Dean, it's uh, Lisa Dillman. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, now I got you. I just stepped out of the arena, so go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, it's Lisa. Um, how long had you been uh, looking to, to make this deal? It sounds like things came together uh, relatively fast here. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I inquired about it at the end of the year, but obviously Boston was going through a transition. And so it, um, so I had made an inquiry about them, um, but it was going nowhere. I think part of it, though, too, was, like I say, Boston was, had a lot of changes going on. Um, then I kind of revisited it again, and I think and it was going nowhere. Uh, there was just no match. And then I think <clears throat> getting here, I wasn't anticipating. This happens all the time. We were gearing towards a number of other things in preparation, and then, you know, <clears throat> it, it's clear Boston has chosen its direction, so to speak. So and it really didn't get serious until last night. But there were very informal inquiries, you know, not long after the season ended, first with Peter Shirelli, then with, with Sweeney. So, but, but to say we were working on it, I don't think we were working on it. It was, a, it was nothing there. So. Uh, Dean, it's Rich Hammond. Um, what... If you had to say one thing or two things, I mean, what was the impetus here? Was it just to make the team better? Was it, you know, knowing that you probably will lose Williams, uh, a combination of those things, something else? Well, uh, to be honest with you, uh, when we were looking at our team, even I mean, this goes on all the time, even when you have your team even during the season and when you have your scouts on the road. Um, we felt that, you know how I do boxes, that we didn't have the ideal fit for that box. And we had a list of players that were the ideal fits, and there weren't many of them. Um, you know, it's kind of... You know, it's the Clark Gillies, Brian Trotche, Mike Boston type trio that most people think is the ultimate type line. And we also wondered whether Gabby was better on the right. And this was a box we thought, you know, in an ideal world, get a player like Clark Gillies. And, again, there's not many like this in the league that can play with top players and bring that element. And um, so safe to say, you know, these are the things you're looking at even in November because you're always looking, okay, what's the next move for your team? Just like we'll do right now. You know, you're, you know what's your next hole? So so that's why I made the inquiry, quite frankly, when the season ended. You know, is this guy available? And, uh, but, and, but like I said, they're not, this deal, and what we gave up quite a bit, but it was very clear I would not give up that unless it not only was a player, but a fit. And, um, so, you know, that's, you know, is it the loss of the other player? I, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I'm not sure you, that's not what drives it. Because this, this isn't done unless it's that type of player. So if you're thinking that, well, we're going to lose these guys, so we got to do something, no. Because, you know, I feel even about, you know, the young players and things. And so, um, no, it's, it's, it's that fit with those ideally those two guys and you know and then that allows everybody else to really fit i mean it's a team you're looking at you're not you shouldn't give the team any relief now you know and keep coming so um that's the idea we'll see and i do think every player on our team just grew three inches and put on 10 pounds of muscle but, so that don't hurt Next question. Well, Dean, do you, do you do this with the thought that, I mean, obviously he's set to be UFA next summer. Do you do, you do this with the thought that he could be a long-term fit, or do you just want to see how that looks before you? Yeah, I think that? it's a big debate right now, right? The whole thing of windows and, 
you know, and you see what's happening out there. Um, again, I think given the fit, it made sense to push the envelope. Um, and, you know, we, you know, we were able to pull this off, you know, um, and we still have, you know, we get a backup bully now. We're going to probably still end up with one four in space. So that's pretty good considering the predicament we were in to be able to prove the team is still off with some space. Um, but, you know, that's, we'll see how that works out. You know, I think, I, I, I you know, you know, I think as far as this group, players, these guys like each other. I think we got an environment where guys want to stay and have a chance to win. And, um, you know, so we'll see how it works out. Obviously, depends. There's some preliminary projections on next year's cap. So, but I have to say the first priority um, in terms of signings now is, is Kopitar. So, and the other thing I'd say about this that shows this team cares about winning, um, what Tyler Toffoli did, and this is, again, how everything ties together, that with the threat of offer sheets and everything out there, the way Toffoli has handled his situation is exemplary in terms of, of team. Um, you know, a lot of these kids in this situation where you see this is a, a, a top young player, and, you know, you could wait for an offer sheet. You could demand $6 million, a long-term deal, and hold out and everything. And, uh, you know, we had talked to him, and it's certainly a fair deal. You know, it's still a, a, you know, it's a good deal for him. But in no way did he say, oh, I'm going to hold anybody hostage like you see going on out there. And if this, if Tyler Toffoli doesn't step up and do this, he can't do this deal. Because we're not going to, because then we would have exposed ourselves to an offer sheet. So, you know, the way, it, it, it's just an exemplar for a young player to realize his time will come and, uh, you know, take a good deal, and, but not try and shoot for the moon. And then the team is allowed to go out and make itself better. Because that was the thing. Once this thing got rolling, it was not doable without Tyler's sign. Because I think if we had done this without Tyler's sign, we're exposed to an offer sheet. Because I think that's now going to become more in vogue. So it's a great example of guys caring about the right things. And, you know, they'll get their money when the time comes. So. Okay, I know, uh, I know you got to get going, Dean. Thank you for the time. Uh, we appreciate okay. it. Well, I ain't got nothing to do now. I ain't got no pick. Hell, I can talk to you guys for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all, right. all right. Thanks, everyone. Okay.